Weekly, uh, 126, the date of the races that are listed. I will second. second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. And we'll be hoping good luck and we'll be hoping for uh, nice winds and sunny skies. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right next on the agenda is the major event license agreement for the 2021 P1 Aqua 10 jet ski races. Hey again, this is our standard agreement. This is a new event that the LaPorte County Convention and Visitors Bureau is bringing to Michigan City. And I believe Rick Wright, yes, there he is. Rick Wright is here. Welcome, Rick. Do you have any questions about the new event? Welcome. Yeah, please, if you want to add any additional comments or color. This is this is the first year for this race. We were going to try to do it last year, but of course, COVID, um, COVID hit. These are actually jet skis. Um, the P1, it's actually Aqua Cross is what it is. P1 Aqua Cross is out of Europe, but they are in the United States now. And so these are our professional jet skis, the big ones, not small ones. <laughs> Um, and if any of you attended the uh, Grand Prix two years ago, we had them for the first time. They'll also be here for the Grand Prix, but what they're intending to do, um, they want to get a Midwestern hub, and they've chosen Michigan City uh, or LaPorte County to run three races in, um, two being at Washington Park this year and one being at Stone Lake in LaPorte. And they have to race all three of those races to qualify for the world championships in the Bahamas. So um, the date of this is July 10th and 11th, just right there in that, right there in that July time period, you know. Um, but it's not going to be, uh, I want to make sure you know that this race is not going to be to the scale of the Great Lakes Grand Prix. We anticipate about 100 jet skis um, that um uh, will be down on the beach. Uh, I think Shannon and I have worked out that we're looking for that lot one, perhaps to put them in. Um, I say lot one, I don't know what you guys call it, but yep, that's right. The North lot by the boardwalk. Um, their actual first event is going to be the Aquacross first event is going to be uh, actually next week in um, Daytona beach. I'll be there and I'll get a lot better understanding just how the jet skis run because during the great lakes grand prix it's all about those offshore power boats we didn't pay much attention to what they did last year so um yeah it's, it's, it should be a great event it's a free event um as i said it's you know we'll have 100 skis out there so it's going to be jam-packed it sounds like a great event and that's uh i i thought the lease was very um descriptive in terms of your agenda and what you intend to do with your scheduling. It's a, a lot of opportunity for fans to come down and watch and enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah. We will be limited on some vending. We'll probably have a few vendors there, three or four. Um, but again, not to the scale where that whole lot front lot will be like the Grand Prix. I, I mean, this is small. Are we, we're just kind of limping into this to make sure we know what we've got. We may expand it in years. So this is going to be an annual thing, hopefully. We hope so too. Any other questions or comments uh, from the board? Uh, my only comment is I, I, looking back at what is all going on in Washington Park for the summer and the addition of this uh, just is going to bring a lot more people to Washington Park and a lot more people to Michigan City. And I just think that everything right now looks like it's going great. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see that uh, you're bringing this in, and I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to going to happen. And since this is the first, uh, I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you. There are no other questions or comments from the board. Do we have any from the public? Yes, please. Uh, yes, I just have a question. It sounds like so many exciting things are happening. What's going to happen if we exceed parking capacity? I mean, do we have a potential of shuttling people from another lot i mean let's kind of think proactively in case this does become super popular you know what are we going to do about things like parking so i just kind of want you to think about you know contingencies parking at 
premium outlets or blue chip or somewhere so that we can shuttle people over. So well, and, I, that, and, and that's what we and that's what we do for the big race. Um, you know, we have parking over at Blue Chip or last year I think we parked people at Ames Field. Um, yeah, and then and then had to pay for buses to bring them down. I don't. That's why I say this is going to be kind of hard. I'm going to get a better picture of this when I go to Daytona Beach and see just how how many people are in attendance. You know, um, but we didn't want to make it big right now because we know that we're taking up some parking. So um, you know, I'll get a better feel for that. You know. You know, we also have to keep in mind we do have a COVID response plan in place for Washington Park in case. Um, the COVID uh, uh, to manage the COVID levels within the state, and we have to then make our um, restrictions. So all this has to be managed within that as well, the parking and the and the COVID response plan. But there there are clauses in these leases too that that help manage the um, expectations should the COVID cases rise. I can share with you as well that P1 has put in place their COVID policies. All the racers have to uh, follow it. I mean, they, they uh, space themselves with the distancing. And um, so that has been approached by P1 as well. And thank you for adding that. Mm -hmm. If there are no other questions from the public and none from the board, what is the pleasure of the board? I would so move that we okay the license agreement for the 2021 P1 Aquacross jet ski races occurring on Saturday, July the 10th and Sunday, July the 11th, 2021. I would second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Thank you. Have a I great day. Have one question in regard to the lease or the, uh, uh, the agreement. I should have asked it prior to the vote, I, but I don't think it's it's a material thing. On page two on the payment amount, it's blank. So is that to be determined once we determine the number of linear fence and all the other items that need to be added? Yes, again, I'll get a lot of that um, better picture next week, for sure. Okay. And then, and we're working with Jack. Jack and Shannon are working on that. Right? Just for the public's knowledge, um, the board establishes fees for major events every year. So there's a dollar amount for however many barricades, a dollar amount for linear foot mm -hmm. for fencing. Um, so that gets calculated closer to the event when we have the final layout. Sure. It's really not a negotiated amount. There's set fees That's for correct. the amenities that are needed. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, the next item is the major event lease for the walk to run Alzheimer's. Yeah, this is also um, a great event, returning to Washington Park for a great cause. Um, the walk would be held on Saturday, October 9th in Washington Park. There was a map enclosed near packet, and Katie Reiser is here to answer any questions the board may have. Welcome, Katie. Hello and welcome. Is there anything you'd like to add to um, what Shannon has already said about the event? Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Shannon. It has been great to work with you. Thank you. Um, I am new with the Alzheimer's Association. I'm the new development manager. Um, and I have found I'm part of the Greater Indiana chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. And I will tell you that we have the most talked about walk in all of Indiana. Um, Michigan City has quite a reputation of being the most unique um, unique walk with the setting on the lakefront um, with the people with the biggest hearts. So um, a very small but mighty group has raised over $40,000 for the Alzheimer's Association, whose mission is to be there for um, supporting with individuals and families who are um, diagnosed and dealing with Alzheimer's and other dementia. So we are excited and looking forward to having probably 35 to 40 teams, um, roughly 250 participants, um, and hopefully wrapping up a, a fantastic season of events at Washington Park. So we are very excited and grateful to, to get to be at, at Washington Park again this year, um, if that's what the board allows. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? 
See none. I have one question. Again, on page two, the amount is left blank, but I believe um, there really is no fee for this because they're just walking through the park and it requires no amenities, no additional thing from the park. And that's therefore, correct. Therefore, there's no fee associated. So they do pay a security deposit, but there's no amenity fees applied. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. President? Yes. I would hope not, but is there a rain date in case the weather is so severe it couldn't walk on the October 9th? Do you have another date? My knowledge, we have not in the past scheduled a rain date. Um, they will just postpone that um, until the following year. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, just one comment. Uh, I think all of us uh, know someone or uh, maybe a family member or a friend who uh, has died from this devastating uh, disease of Alzheimer's. And uh, I would like to thank you, Katie, for putting this all together and raising money for something that one of these days we hope there's going to be a cure. Because right now, uh, anyone that has that, we just watch them slowly deteriorate. And that is so unfortunate for the family and the friends. So thank you for organizing this, putting this on, and I hope it's a, a great success and you raise an awful lot of money to help end this devastating condition. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Well said. Uh, any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, uh, do we have a motion to approve the major event license for the 2021 walk and run to end Alzheimer's? I would so move that we approve the major event license agreement for the 2021 walk or run to end Alzheimer's that is scheduled to take place on Saturday, October 9th, 2021. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. All right, next up is the Michigan City Area Schools request to waive fees for a millennial plaza. And the Michigan City Area Schools contacted me and asked that their request be withdrawn. Very good. Um, so I'm not in the action. I guess there's no, uh, no action needed. No. All right, we'll move right on to the Michigan City Area Schools request for reduced golf fees for the Nowding. Okay. Last month, I worked with Michigan City High School Athletic Director Craig Shaman and our golf pro Chris Magnuson to host the first annual Michigan City High School Athletics Golf Outing. The date for this event is to be June 18th, 2021 at the Michigan City Municipal Golf Course. Several weeks ago, after Mr. Magnuson and Mr. Shalom coordinated the event, I received an email from High School Athletic Director Mr. Shalom officially appealing to me and the Parks Department Board for a special pricing for that event. We are being presented with the following, quote, rather than the usual price of $29 per golfer to cover carts and green fees, we would like to ask for a price of $20 per golfer. We ask this in the spirit of community. Our athletic department funds itself and any single dollar we can save, raise, goes directly to supporting our student athletes. As members of the Michigan City community responsible for the education of our children, we ask that you work with us in raising as much money as possible to support our efforts. So, I have discussed this with various people involved with the golf course. Some of the comments were not supportive of the price reduction. Apparently, other organizations will request the same consideration. Some comments I got were supportive of this price reduction. Please assess the above request and decide if the Michigan City Parks and Recreation Department will allow Michigan City Area Schools to hold their fundraiser event at Municipal Golf Course at a reduced rate. I think if we are motivated to encourage the well being of our youth in Michigan City, this will be an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shin. Any questions or comments from the board? 
Uh, Mr. President, a few years ago, there were law changes down in Indianapolis about funding for different things in the public schools in Indiana. And one of them was a uh, redefining how money, uh, how the athletic departments receive money. Uh, I can understand why there might perhaps, and probably is, uh, some parties that would want the same uh, discount. I would look at this as the $9 reduction uh, as a way of helping youth in Michigan City uh, to participate. Now, it's, and it's for the entire athletic department. It's for boys and girls. It's not just basketball or volleyball. It's for the entire athletic department. And I, I know from talking with Craig that uh, there is a dire need to raise funds. And coaches are out uh, having fundraisers. Having been there myself, I understand uh, what it takes to raise enough money to operate your program or any program. I myself would be in favor of reducing the price from $29 to $20 to help our youth participate. And sometimes you learn lifelong skills through the athletic department. Thank you, Mr. Freeze. Any other questions or comments from the board? I just have uh, one. Uh, we do have, uh, we've had long standing agreement with Michigan City Area Schools where uh, we share uh, assets for lack of a better word. So uh, we are allowed to use their facilities at no cost and vice versa. They're allowed to use our facilities. Uh, now, this is probably with the booster club. It's probably not Michigan City Area Schools, but that's drawing, in my mind, uh, I can look at them as one in, in this regard. Mm -hmm. uh, and th that's my only comment is that uh, it takes uh, the partnership has been a long-standing one. We've benefited from the relationship from Michigan Area Schools uh, for for many years, and um, I, I think this would be a um, a like kind exchange in in light of that partnership. Uh, unless there are any other questions or comments from the uh, board, any public comment? Oh, if I if I could, Minister sure. Lashford, um, just. Um... Just to hit on, I think what you said and what Mr. Free said as well, but as Mr. Uh, or as Superintendent, Mr. Shin indicated that obviously one of the first concerns you think of with a request like that is, well, others will try and follow suit and ask for that same consideration. But I think you and Mr. Shin and Mr. Freeze um, have have shown, and I, I would just like to add to that, that this is my position too, this situation is different. I mean, as you mentioned, the longstanding um, memorandum of understanding that has been in place since 1988 with the Parks Department and the Michigan City Area Schools. Um, and with my background and this being an exception in my mind made for the betterment of our youth and our children, um, I think if exceptions are going to be made, uh, they should be made for the children. They are the future of our community. And I'm not all sure of what Mr. Freeze was talking about with changes in funding, but it sounds like everyone is struggling there. And if this is our way um, to give back in a sense so that funds can go towards our student athletes, um, I'm also in favor of that. Thank you, Ms. Espar. Um, any comments, further comments? Questions? If not, what's the pleasure of the board? I would move that uh, we reduce the price uh, from $29 per golfer uh, to $20 per golfer for the uh, Michigan City Area School Athletic Golf Outing on June 18th of this year. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, moving right along. We next is the Uptown Social 5K race. This uh, request was submitted by Jeremy Rossi, who is also with us tonight, I believe. Hello and welcome. And um, the route was submitted in your packet. 
This has been reviewed by the police department's traffic commander, Jeff Lineski. And if the park board approves of this tonight, again, this is no amenities whatsoever. They're just using part of Washington Park as their route. So if you approve it tonight, it would move on to the Board of Works where uh, Commander Lineski said he would fully support it. Thank you. You're welcome. Questions or comments from the board? I just have uh, one comment. Uh, as there are, obviously there's gonna be a lot of volunteers that uh, are needed for this. Uh, is the Park and Recreation Department, is it, is there any, uh, well, what do I wanna say? Is there any, any other requirement that we supply any other people to help with this? Or this is uh, just something that since it's coming through our area, uh, we need to okay that. So the police department um, will work with the EMA for volunteers and they did state if there were any additional intersections that they could not cover, then Mr. Rossi would have to um, stage volunteers at those points. And I also wanted to point out the date of this is um, a Thursday evening, July 29th from four to 6 p.m., which is a little bit different than we're used to. We're used to Saturday, Sundays that start at six or seven in the morning. So I think it's pretty cool. A weekday evening event that winds up back at their place. And Jeremy, if you have any additional comments? Yeah, we actually got the, well, I got the idea. I've been working with a gentleman named Todd from TH Timing, who's helping me coordinate all of this, um, as well as race the region. Um, there used to be a race sponsored by the NAC called the Dingus Day Run, and it occurred on a Tuesday evening. And so that's how I got the idea to host this one on a Thursday evening. Um, and the idea is for, you know, participants to, you know, run the race, and then they come back to Uptown and enjoy some, uh, you know, handmade libations in our courtyard and also in our uh, beautiful ballroom. Um, so again, it's just bringing more things to Michigan City. Um, we do plan on um, donating a portion of the proceeds from our bar sales to a local organization. I don't know if you guys know this, but every event that we do at every public event that we do at Uptown Social benefits a local organization such as Dunebrook, Stepping Stone Women's Shelter, the Salvation Army, um, just to name a few. Um, so again, we will definitely have some sort of uh, charity tied in with this event. Um, and yes, we do, uh, uh, Captain Luneski has already actually found 12 um, uh, volunteers for this type of event too. So that'll be taken care of. And as Shannon said, any additional, we will take care of on our end. Um, but I think this is gonna be a lot of fun and um, I hope you guys think the same thing. <laughs> Thank you for that extra uh, information. It looks like a great event. Uh, there, there's been a similar route when the Samaritan Center used to run yeah. a 5K, and it's a great route. It's um, just being able to start downtown and then go over the bridge and run through the park and come back. And the event afterwards sounds like a blast, too. So, And I do want to mention the time um, has changed a bit. So after talking to Captain Lineski, um, we thought so that way people who... <laughs> work until five o'clock and still participate. We were actually thinking about running it um, from 6 p.m. to seven. I don't know if that makes a difference, um, but the only reason is we want to get obviously ample participation so we can get, uh, have a nice, you know, donation to charity and all that good stuff. So we, we were, we're going to make it a little bit later, but I actually looked at the time in July, the actually um, the sun starts setting at 8.08. 808. Um, so that will we'll still have sunlight and everything to be able to run the race. So I did do a little research on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's July 29th is the day of the of Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Jeremy, you had mentioned uh, the Dingus, the Dingus Day run. Uh, were you involved in that? Um, I was not. I actually, the gentleman from TH Timing was the one who made me aware of it. And he also mentioned the um, the skedaddle race, um, the Samaritan skedaddle, which is actually how I was able to um, plot the route that I did plot. So um, I kind of used the best of both worlds with both those races and combined them into one. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that the Dingus Day run was the one that started at the Northwest Racquet Club. 
And this was run for several years and became very, very popular. And of course, the Northwest Racquet Club is no longer in operation. But that was a very successful race. And so if uh, if this uh, ends up being as, as successful as that, uh, I think it's really going to be a great thing to, to have in Michigan City. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Jeremy, this is Ed. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me if you need any assistance in the park with barricades or anything of that nature. Thank you very much, Ed. I appreciate that as well. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments from the board? Any questions or comments from the public? If not, we have a motion to approve the Uptown Social 5K race on July 29th. I so move that we okay the Uptown Social 5K run uh, occurring on Thursday, July the 29th from 4 to 6 p.m. 2021. I would second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Best of luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, now we have the North Point Pavilion 2021 rental agreement and fees for us. Yeah, so Ed and I met with um, the owner and manager of Sunset Grill on several occasions to discuss their 2021 operations. They suggested that we look at renting out the lower patio of the pavilion. If the board recalls, we, we rented both the upper and lower patios in 2016 and 2017. Um, but with the restaurant, the building, the operation being new, there was a lot of conflicts between the two. So at this this time, I think if we just keep it to a lower pavilion rental, I think it'll be successful. Um, I think a lot of people are looking for outdoor venues because of COVID. Uh, it's the same contract that we used in the past. However, the rental fees um, have changed. So for a full patio rental, it would be $1,000 half patio rental, $500, and that's for civil city residents of Michigan City. Non-residents, full rental, $1,500, and half rental, $750. And this contract has also been approved, uh, reviewed and approved by Attorney Nuremberg. Thank you, Shannon. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve the North Point Pavilion 2021 rental agreement and fees? I would so move that we approve the 2020 North Point Pavilion uh, rental agreement and fees. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. All right, we'll move on now to the next two items have to do with uh, some changing of job descriptions for the uh, golf course greens assistants. Yes. Uh, a month or two ago, our head green superintendent retired. So we moved up John Marshall to that position and we did not fill the position of John Marshall. So we would like to propose to you this job description to move Michael Moore up to a position where he would be entitled assistant green superintendent slash mechanic. There was a little discrepancy on the other job description that says second assistant green superintendent. I would like you board to eliminate that one and just discuss this assistant green superintendent slash mechanic. This would be the job description for that person and hope that you agree. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shin. So I'm clear, we are not gonna consider item K on the agenda. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. All right, any questions or comments from the board in regard to the assistant green superintendent mechanic job description? I have one, Ed, since we're not considering the second assistant, part of the job description under the bold essential duties and responsibilities, 
Uh, do we need to eliminate, it says report directly to the green superintendent or second green superintendent or second well, assistant green superintendent? That's correct. Uh, in this case, we would have to eliminate the second assistant green superintendent. Yes. All right. So we can just amend that job description by eliminating the second. Will do. Thank you. Sure. So uh, again, uh, any questions or comments from the board? Thank you for supplying in Redline version. Uh, it uh, makes it very easy to determine and decipher the changes that you're making. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, uh, do we have a motion to approve the job description update? I would so move that we approve the job description update with that amendment uh, to strike the language referencing the second assistant. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. All right, so next up is a request for quotes for planting marrow grass along the beach paths. And this is part of the Lake Michigan Coastal Program grant re we received for the Sheridan Beach Public Access and Erosion Control Project. As the board knows, we did purchase and install the beach mats um, and intended to plant the marrow grass along them in the fall, but we bid that project out in the fall of 2020. We received one quote that came in at 52,000 and some change, which was almost double our budget. So we would like to rebid this project out um, in alternates as we've been doing with other projects that come in over budget, just to see how many um, beach paths that we can get planted. If it's only two, it's better not, than not planning any and giving the grant money back. So I would just um, ask you to approve the quote package again um, so we can send this out. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Any questions or comments? Uh, my only comment is, uh, Shannon, thank you for, again, um, taking a quote and then segregating it, bifurcating it so that we can uh, get a project done, maybe not to the scope that we originally intended, but that we can at least get something done. Uh, any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, uh, do we have a motion to approve the request for quotes? I would so move that we approve the uh, request for quotes packet for planting the marin grass along our beach paths. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the item N would be a metal detector license request. Okay. Uh, this is a proposal from a gentleman named Mr. Stephen Marshall, who is with us tonight. And like I've said before, uh, public comment is very important to me, and I'm sure it's important to you as well. So uh, this proposal came to me from Mr. Marshall at the zoo. And uh, Mr. Marshall, if you would like to explain your proposal, here you go. Well, okay. I don't know if I'm on. I had a problem on the Zoom thing, but you can hear me all right, right? We can Fine. hear you. Welcome. Yes. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, yeah, my proposal was to uh, metal detect the Michigan City properties. And uh, the problem is, you know, how you distinguish between somebody that is a good metal detector guy and somebody just out there tearing up the turf. So I was under the assumption that we could issue permits and you would go to the city and get a permit to metal detect and pay a sum and that banner whatever the permit would be displayed on your back or in your person's body and when they metal detect if a city worker or somebody sees that they're tearing up the turf they could write that number that was issued to that individual and they could be fined for the damage caused but there's a lot of metal detector guys that are like me that are, you can't tell where I've dug. I dig a hole, I 
when I dig a hole, I take a spade, a shovel, and I dig a circle. I take the whole plug out, just like a golf course, and I get the coin or item out from the bottom and then replace it and then pound it back in so it's not I'm not tearing the turf on the top. And a lot of us do the same way. So that's why I was, and I think in getting a permit to do this hobby would separate us from the people that do damage. So I would like to see the city okay metal detecting in uh, the property is Washington Park, especially, uh, and to try it. It's a hobby I love. I'm retired and and I live right here in Michigan City, and I, I'd like to see it happen, but uh, it's all up to you guys. Thank you, Mr. Marshall, for uh, explaining your intent and your idea. Any questions or comments from the board? Uh, yes, I do. Excuse me, Phil, the other Phil. Um, as far as the comment about in the Michigan City, I don't think this board has the authority to issue a permit for all of Michigan City. Certainly, we could offer the permit on property that uh, we are charged with taking care of. Am I correct in that, Phil? I would say yes. Yeah. Well, from what I, I would agree with you, but I'm not speaking from a position of authority in that regard. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, I thought I was under the impression that we had some kind of an agreement, and uh, I understand exactly what Mr. Marshall was saying, but uh, I was told that we have an agreement that if people are doing metal detecting and it is on the beach where you can dig to find things, that's fine, but that we frown and do not allow metal detecting on any lawn areas because of the damage that would be done. Is that is that correct? That is correct. So that's a park rule that you cannot metal detect um, in lawns. And it's not only from the damage, it's also because we have underground infrastructure. So yes. if, you, if yep. you don't have that delineated, you know, that could be an issue, a safety issue. Um, but that is the park rule currently. And the guys that are professional metal detectors, they can distinguish when there's electric line running through underneath the uh, uh, surface of the ground and how deep it is, the better detector guys. And they, that could be part of the issuing of the permit. Uh, we're not going to let somebody go out with mean, you know, small equipment or that's not especially equipped to do this professionally. So, Mr. Marshall, would it be your intent then um, basically to expand the area to which you're allowed to search because right now you're restricted to only the beach? Yes, I'd like to do the parks. Yes. Are you? And uh, something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Something else I'd like to say is uh, also when the permits issued, it being at sandy soil in Michigan City, this park with the cost of the permit could issue the guy a, a little packet of grass seed. So if he gets into an area where the turf does fall apart due to being sand, he can reseed that area. And I would say we could do it at certain times of the year, like late fall or early spring when the, when, when it's, the grass is dormant. Mr. Marshall, are you aware of other cities that have such permitting requirements? No, I'm not. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Shannon, have we had problems with people uh, metal detecting in areas other than uh, on the beach? We have in Washington Park. And I'd just like to say I, I'm in favor of Mr. Marshall's um request it is a recreational opportunity i just want the board to recognize the safety issues of underground infrastructure i myself just bought my nine-year-old grandson a metal detector for his birthday and took it to the beach yesterday and it's a fun hobby so i'm in favor of doing it if there's an area that could be done safely with no damage to uh, the park facilities but if, if, if we allow uh, digging in the grassy areas, uh, is that then considered uh, damaging? 
Well, it's against the park rules right now. That's so. So we would have people to on the lawns. Yes, our staff would inform them that you would have to change your rules and have, I would think, specific areas where it would be allowed. Okay. And it'd have to be monitored. You know, you don't want a lot of brown spots in the grass. If, right. If we had a drought and there's not enough rain. That, that's why I want to say we do it in the spring or late fall. And if you make the permit high enough, a dollar value, it's going to, it's going to, guy like me is willing to pay the money just to have for the hobby to do it in a close to town instead of driving further away. Now, if, if we did something like this and had a permit uh, with a set amount of money, that permit would be good for how long? I would say one year. One year? Yeah. And if they damage the ground, I'm, I'm thinking if they wore a banner on their back that they got the permit, anybody, police officer, some, somebody from the parks department can look and see if they're doing damage to the turf. They can see the man's number on his back, number two or whatever, it can report it, and he'll have to sign a permit, a light um, agreement that if he damages it, he's responsible to repair that or define the cost. Any other questions or comments? Would, excuse me, would we have to have uh, our attorney draw up a contract type thing with all these aforementioned things? Well, I would, I would think, uh, first, let me get the comments from Dahlia, and then I can kind of summarize what I think we should do from here. But if, if you had a comment or question? Yes, um, I don't know. I, I really think there's a chance to do a lot more damage to the grass and turf than there is to, a, do we want to attract metal detectors to Michigan City? Not necessarily. So I don't know. I just think that, you know, with all the things going on at the beach, that might be something that it's not optimal. So I'm sorry, you know, Mr. Marshall, but I just think that those divots, even though they're replaced, if they're replaced, little kids will be pulling them up. And I, I don't know. I just don't see the advantage to the city really too much, except for the permitting fee. And that would be minimal, I think. Thank you. Yeah. Or I would think maybe they allow it a weekend out of the year that you can metal detect like in the fall or early spring, you know, something like that. And people could do that. And then that way it would be more regulated. I think maybe what we do from this point, rather than get attorneys involved in writing policy, uh, we should probably vet it um, within the park department. And then um, if we think it's uh, a viable project, or have, I'm saying this in a public a public meeting, invite Mr. Marshall and anyone else to see. Um, this, it, this is a good introduction to it, but I don't know if it's a proper forum to vet all the uh, all the elements that need to be considered should we consider a, a permitting process. Uh, Ms. Nuremberg? Thank you. Um, it would be helpful to see if other towns or other park departments have done this and what that permitting system looks like and what the administrative burden that entails. That would be really helpful, Mr. Marshall. So if you could put out some feelers to see if there's any other towns doing this, be most useful. Yeah, okay. okay. And what problems you're experiencing as well, so we have more information or more information to go on. Okay, yeah, I did the city of Long Beach. They're municipal buildings, and uh, they were happy with it. But that was just me as an individual. So I, you know, here, yes. yeah, I think you can't just allow somebody, one person, to do it. You have to open up to the public because it is a public park. So that's why I was thinking of the permit to be issued to the individuals who want to do it. So, yeah, I think it's something new that I'm coming up with, but I can check and see if it's been done. Good, thank you. Thank you. So unless someone uh, disagrees or objects, I don't think there's any action we need to take tonight other than to take this, our takeaway is to, this needs to be vetted a little bit further within the park department and with um, interested parties who might be interested in in the metal detector 
surveying or, or searching. And Mr. Latchard, if I could say for the public, if there are um, metal detectors out there that would like to see this, um, coming forward and letting us know that because that at least for from my perspective that will help to discuss and talk about if this is something that um as dahlia was saying could be beneficial to the city and knowing how many permits would be issued and, and what kind of oversight and and as laura mentioned any other administrative um aspects that would be entailed i think a lot of that will depend on how many people would be coming and utilizing that. And so I, I just put a feel out there to the public that if you, if this is something that you're interested in, uh, let us know that so we can get a better idea if this is a, a, a widespread interest. Uh, and then that would also, I think, help to answer some of the questions of, are we gonna be drawing people into our parks to, to, to make divots and, and look for things and is that what we're wanting? I, I just think it would help us to um, to look at this from from all sides. So if you're interested, let us let us know or come to these meetings and let us know. Thank you for mentioning that. I agree. All right, unless um, there's any other questions or comments, I don't think there's any action that we need to take in terms of a vote tonight. It doesn't look like there's any objections. So, uh, Shannon, was there any other items that we need to consider under new business tonight? No, sir. Thank you. We'll move on to report of officers. Uh, superintendent's report, Mr. Shin. Oh, I think he's muted. I think you're muted, Ed. Yes, sorry. thank you. I couldn't tell if you were talking or not with a mask. <laughs> Tonight, thank you. I will be reporting on Washington Park, Zoo, Golf Courses, Youth Baseball, South uh, Senior Center, and North Point Pavilion. So, Washington Park, you may have noticed some sand accumulated in the roadways and parking lots, and please bear with us. Our staff is quite short due to one COVID quarantined person, one COVID case, and one person that is actually sick with a common cold or flu. Other work, however, has been accomplished as normal. April 30th, our staff will begin the water, surface line, water service line opening to restrooms. Mowing and preparation of baseball fields has begun. I had a discussion today with the contractor HP Construction and plans are to mobilize next week to complete their welding that remains from the catwalk repair. Also together we will be discussing the and assessing the cable railing issues. Monday I gave permission to Mr. Musial to hold his food giveaway event in Fetters Alley April 14th Wednesday from 10 o'clock until noon. Golf courses. Golf course, the North Course is now open. Reports from Golf Pro and Green Superintendent are that monetarily the golf course revenue is way ahead compared to 2020 at this point in time. The maintenance staff are in the process of testing here the irrigation system. <laughs> Keep in mind there are approximately five to six hundred sprinkler heads with those two golf courses combined. So far they've only had three leaks and they are repaired. The golf course looks fantastic, so hats off to that golf staff. The zoo, opening on April 1st, the zoo has attracted almost record-breaking attendance. Saturday, this last Saturday, April 3rd, 975 people crossed the turnstile at the zoo. The zoo looks magnificent and the animals are all healthy. Youth baseball signups are increasing slightly since our last press release. According to persons involved in youth baseball of 2018 and 2019, numbers are only slightly down from that, those times. Coaches slash supervisor meeting is set for this Saturday. Evaluation day is set for April 17th. Baseball games will begin on or about May 17th. Sad to say that girls softball since 2019 
has not had enough signups to support a league, and that goes for the same this year. Ten U only ten in ten U ten years old and under, eight kids signed up. Twelve year old and under, only five kids signed up, and fifteen year old and under, only one person signed up. In baseball, T ball has ninety seven people. Which will equate to 8.8 games uh, teams. Uh, 8U has 47 people. 10U has 38 signups. 12U only has 32 signups, and 16U only has 24 signups, which would be only two teams. But we'll make it work, and they're going to have a lot of fun this summer. Senior Center. I spoke with the Senior Center Board President today, and according to Mrs. Gonzalez, the seniors are very excited about the reopening May 17th. As we all know, our COVID positivity rates are hovering at about 10% in LaPorte County. So keep your fingers crossed so the pandemic rates do decline. North Point Pavilion slash Sunset Grill, restaurant owner Patrick Wilkins, would like to be sure that the board is in favor of an upper deck cooking area. It is Mr. Wilkins' desire to know that the board is in favor of this concept of cooking upstairs and building a facility for that before he commissions an engineer to do the drawings that is required for that type of project. Does the board have any problems with, with North Point Pavilion building an upper deck cooking area? If so, he would like to know now. I'm sorry that didn't make it to the agenda, but maybe you can give me an idea if he can move forward and hire an engineer to do the drawings that are required for such project. Anyone for the board care to uh, question or comment? Ed, um, this is Oliver Phil. What type of cooking area are we looking at? A, a um, a grill type thing or a full kitchen? That's a good question. It will not be a full kitchen. It will not have any frying ability. That would uh, entail having to have a suppression and hood. Uh, this will just be a porch like designed nicely by an architect. It would be a porch screened in porch system, similar to what they have in their bar and it would be screened in. And that's the, that's the recommendation and the codes for the health department. So it has to be a screened in area. They just want the smell of cooking and they would like to be able to cook on the deck that they are providing the food rather than going downstairs to the kitchen. If I can share my screen, I'll show you a little drawing that they have. Uh, we'll try sharing my screen. Is that possible, Shannon? There's a drawing of a side view of the, there's the existing building on the right, and this would be in the northwest corner of the upper deck. So it's about eight foot four wide. And then let's see if I can find another view. Their, their contractor drew these up. This would be the inside of the screened in area. Looks like it would be uh, somewhere around eight by 12. They would have a flat top grill, a gas grill, and a prep cooler, no frying involved. They just want to be able to cook upstairs. So Ed, how, how um, that says a 30 foot prep cooler, but it looks like there's space on each side. So Six what's the total square cooler. foot? Prep cooler. You know, this drawing came into me this afternoon. I can't honestly say, Phil, why that says six foot by 30 foot gas grill. Uh, Probably six by three. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It it uh, it might have been a rough drawing. Uh, I can guarantee that the size building that they want to build is about twelve by eight. That is a side view. Let's see if they have another view. There we go. Thirteen nine by eight foot four, and it would be stashed in that. That's the northwest corner of that 
I'm sorry, the northeast corner of that deck. Looks like it has a shed roof and it will match it will match the other unit that they build over here to the right as far as the facade. So the owner just doesn't want to continue and spend the money on an engineer because it will be designed and has to be designed for a building on city property. If anyone has anything against this concept. Any questions or comments from the board? Yeah, any idea of the cost involved or any kind of an estimate, just a ballpark? I, I, the cost would be borne by the uh, tenant. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. I was just wondering, you know, how much is he willing to spend on something like this? Because it's, a, it's an endeavor. There's no doubt about that. It is, but apparently it's very difficult for them to carry the food up to the deck from the lower kitchen. I think by that time it's possible that food might get cold. Uh, I think customers like to see that their food is prepared for them on the same level they are on, according to the restaurant owners. Uh, they like to know that the, uh, the restaurant owners claim that the smell of the food is, is a good indication or a good uh, reason for people to come up and, and use the restaurant. But as far as the price is concerned, Kent, uh, prices of materials have gone so high, I wouldn't begin to be able to estimate that without a list of materials. Okay. Uh, the elevator to the left of the kitchen area? No, the elevator would be in the southwest corner. So this would be diagonal at the other end of the deck from the elevator, diagonal all the way down to the mm -hmm. other end and the east end of the upper deck. Yeah. Northeast corner. Any other questions or comments? My only comment, Ed, is that I, we certainly need the right of first refusal on any design. And it's just, it's tough to, with drawings like this, to give the go-ahead. Um, personally, I'm not speaking for the rest of the board, I'm, I think he needs a little grill up there. But it's hard for me to see, yeah, go, to give you any sort of uh, assurance. Yeah, this is great. Go ahead with it. Drawn like this. It's... It's a high profile area. It's, uh, it's got to look right. Um, and I guess I need a little something of more substance visually uh, to, to get a comfort level to say, yeah, go ahead and build that. Uh, and I'm assuming it, it wouldn't be necessarily temporary. It's going to be more of a permanent structure. Yes. And those are just my, my quick comments. Well, my comments were it has to be uh, quite the structure because of the winds up there. Uh, the first proposal was a screened in prefabbed enclosure that screened and that would probably blow away. So this will have to be a permanent structure, yes. Any other questions or comments from the board? I was just wondering if he could give us a little more of, as, as you said, Phil, uh, looking at this, uh, it's a pretty good sketch, but I would, I would be more comfortable with a little more detail and exactly what would be involved inside this, uh, this permanent uh, kitchen type of building. I will pass that information on. Anything else in your report, Ed? No, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Is that enough guidance from the board or do you need something else? No, I think, I think that's enough guidance. That's perfect. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, the superintendent tonight? 
Ed, can you give us an update on the lifeguard situation, please? The lifeguard situation is kind of sad. We had uh, probably, correct me if I'm wrong, Shannon, but maybe 10 or 11 people interested and it's dwindled down to four for sure. Four people ready to be lifeguards. Right, so today was the last day of the training and certification at the YMCA. Um, we did have four applicants in that training. I received another application um, just prior to this meeting that says they're certified, but I have not followed up on that. So if they all pass, that only gives us five, unless we receive any more applications with guards that already have their certification. Can we? If I could interrupt, I, I was going to say this during my report from the park board. Um, during their last, since our last meeting, I've had numerous inquiries. I didn't realize that uh, in, to take the test, it cost $400. And that was a deterrent to three guys who uh, were going to try to get certified. I mean, I didn't realize that that was the cost. It, it's pretty steep. Yeah, it is. And the reason the cost is so high is because our guards have to have one additional certification, which is the waterfront training for guarding right. open waters, not a pool, not an inland lake. Um, but if if you look at the $5 an hour raise that they'd be getting, you know, that equates to 20, 22 hours of work and the certifications are good for two years. So they can carry them forward to YMCA jobs or other areas. So if you have four or five applicants, does that, is that enough to um, give assurance to the public that we are offering guarded beaches? So our plan B was um, to reduce the hours and the days that we guard maybe it's only saturday and sunday um friday saturday and sunday so we're still taking the applications we hope the situation gets better but we need a minimum of six just to do our guarded swim area which is only a 200 by 400 foot buoy box just north of the lifeguard tower that does not give us any ability to be doing rescues on 1.9 miles of beach so yes, we'll have to determine boundaries that they are not going to go out of and that 911 would have to handle. Um, but we're hopeful that we can have some coverage for families that prefer to swim in a guarded area. Um, I think the weekends make sense. Obviously that's when most of our tourists are in town. But yeah, it's sad. We did a really big campaign this year, a lot of support from the council and just not that much interest. As long as as long as everyone knows, if we do have a limited staff, I don't want to give a false sense of security to people coming down to Washington Park that it, we're offering more than we actually are. So we'll just have to work on that messaging if it comes to that. Any other questions or comments about the lifeguards and or for the superintendent? I don't. I just have another comment. I had we were going to table this. Uh, uh, Pepsi Cola thing. Has there any been any movement on on the beverage? Yeah. So we did renegotiate an agreement with them. They were not able to get it through their accounting and then legal department in time to make this agenda. But it will be on your next. Thank you. I did get a preview of it and going down to the three year contract. If nothing changes, only really affected that sixty five hundred dollars a year they give us for five years um and it reduced it to six thousand dollars a year so i think that's reasonable thank you you're welcome any other questions or comments seeing none we'll move on to the liaison reports and first up is planning commission ms espar Thank you, Mr. Latchford. The Planning Commission did meet on uh, Tuesday, March 23rd. Uh, however, there was nothing relating to the Park Department. Our next meeting will be April 27th at 6 p.m. and that'll be over Zoom again. Thank you. And the Port Authority liaison, Mr. Fries? Uh, yes, there was a meeting and um, nothing 
there, there's something that we don't have any control over this, but it looks like uh, they're going to have a uh, farmer's market type of, of thing set up on Thursdays from uh, June 3rd to September 2, uh, offering food, uh, produce, and baked goods, etc., with a uh, capacity of 80 vendors and three food trucks. And that was fine. And then uh, brought up the fact about music. And I've been thinking Thursday is the uh, concert. And um, Kathy uh, Rogers assured me it wasn't a band type thing. It would be perhaps a person playing a guitar and strumming folk songs or something like, something like that. Similar to what they have down there, I think, um, at the fish camp periodically. So it just would be something perhaps that people come down to the, uh, for the Thursday concert, they might come early and buy some apples. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's, a, that's all, nothing else of, uh, of interest for, for uh, the park board. <laughs> Thank you. And the Zoological Society, Mr. Lang. Uh, yes, uh, the Zoological Society uh, will not meet again until uh, next Tuesday, which is April the 13th. So if there's any decisions on anything, I will bring that uh, to the board at that time. And if I may, Mr. President, I would like to backtrack for just one moment on uh, one item. I just have a question for some, some clarification. And this goes back to uh, our Wayne heating and air conditioning, uh, that's uh, the exhaust uh, fan in the kitchen. On, uh, on my material that I received in the packet, uh, after the, uh, the quote here from Wayne Heating, I have here, and I just had a question what this was. This is from JB West Roofing and Construction. And it has to do with repair of kitchen exhaust uh, vent using white rubber and also a quote from them using black rubber materials. And there is a, a, a quote for $1,600 and a quote for almost $1,000. And I wasn't really uh, certain what exactly this was, but it was in the packet. And I just had a question is because we didn't uh, address this. And I was just wondering exactly what that is. Can explain that, Kent. I'm sorry I didn't. I'm sorry I didn't bring that up. But in order to flash the penetration through the roof so it doesn't leak, yeah. uh, Wayne Heating always asks if they if if I can get a roofer to do that. So I got two quotes: one from RNL Roofing that was higher. I didn't see it in the packet, and the two quotes from. JMB West indicate that the rubber roof membrane is more expensive when it's white than it is when it's black. So they were out of the white and they would have to buy a full roll of that material. So I walked over to Northport Pavilion to look and see and the other penetrations have used black so it will match. Uh, it's not unsightly and it's less expensive. So I chose with, I chose the less expensive quote. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Does that conclude your zoological society report? Yes, sir. It does. Thank you. Uh, moving right on to the attorney's report, uh, Ms. Nierberg. Nothing to report, thank you. I want to also echo what Shannon said earlier. I think there are no less than 11 or 12 contracts that you had to uh, efficiently and thoroughly go through and prepare on our behalf. So uh, that was that's quite a bit of uh, effort you had to put in. So I wanted to thank you for uh, for that and doing it. Thank you for that. that. And I'll second that. <laughs> thank you, Laura. Thank you, Thank you, girls. And for doing it in a timely manner that we can address it all on this agenda rather than spreading it out over the next two or three meetings. So that, that means a lot. It helps us keep things moving along. 
Uh, the next item, uh, are any director's reports tonight? No, sir. And department finances, Mr. Lang. All righty. Uh, Michigan City Park Department claims docket for April the 7th, 2021. Municipal $30,283.94. Golf petty cash $714.90. Under zoo endowment, none at this time. Total claims $30,998.84. I so move that we okay the claims docket for April the 7th, 2021. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Payroll number seven. Uh, this is a pay date of March the 26th, 2021. Payroll number seven, $40,008.03. And I so move that we meet payroll number seven. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Under gifts and donations, Big B Coffee, 2021 Girls Softball, 16 and under team sponsorship, $350. Uh, Haas and Associates, 2021 Youth Baseball League, team sponsorship, $350. SL Williams and Associates, miscellaneous zoo donation, uh, $100. I so move that we accept these gifts and donations. Uh, I have a question before I second. Uh, at what, uh, excuse me, uh, Kent? Yes. $1,500 for what age group of girls? Oh, the, the 100 was for uh, from Williams and Associate. That was miscellaneous zoo donation. No, the, 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 the one associate. Go ahead. The one for softball for the girls. Uh, it has on here youth, uh, youth Baseball League team sponsorship. $350. Shannon, you may know a little more about that at this time. Wait a minute. I thought you said $1,600. $350. For girls? Girls 16U softball. The girls softball is 16 and under. Team sponsorship, that is $350. Oh, I got the 16. I don't think we're going to have that, are we, Ed? That age group? No, we only in that in that age group we only have uh, that was sixteen and under, Kent. Uh, yes, that was uh, from a Big B Coffee. Yeah, uh, one person signed up for that. So, so then we would we would have to return that uh, mm -hmm. uh, that money. Could we, could we ask them if they would? And I'm sure, perhaps I'm not sure, but I would think they have a, a special reason for designated that, that age group for the girls, but perhaps they might consider adding that to uh, another age group. Yeah, we always reach out to the sponsors if we don't have the program. Um, and even last year when it was canceled, I was kind of surprised at how many sponsors said, just keep it for next year. Okay. So yeah, they're very generous about applying it to another league if needed. But I just wondered about a second if we're not going to have it. Well, we can make a motion to accept this, and uh, as Shannon said, uh, then get in contact with them and, and ask them what they would like to do. That would be, I think that would be all right, would it not, Shannon? That's correct, yes. So I would so move if we have a second. I have a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Under minor transfers, none at this time. Zoo endowment, none at this time. Board of Works, none at this time. Credit card charges, none at this time. And that completes the financial report for April the 7th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Any comments from the public tonight? Yes, please. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I was sent... Uh, this email from uh, a resident and it, it's regarding a petition she started that has 200 Michigan City residents already have signed this. So well, if you don't mind, I'll read what sure. the petition is about. Please. The person is Kathy Parker 
And she says, our children deserve better than a playground from the days when Reagan was president and viewers wondered who shot JR. That's the reality of what our lakefront show police, Washington Park, offers, outdated rusty equipment. Modern playgrounds help children develop physical coordination, strength, and flexibility with equipment such as seesaw, merry-go-round, swing set, slide, jungle gym, chin-up bar, sandbox, spring rider, trapeze rings, playhouses, and mazes. Children learn how to play, share, and use their imaginations. Washington Park needs a modern, state-of-the-art playground for its youngest citizens. Communicate your will to city council. Please sign and forward this to other Michigan City residents who want to invest in our future. So this is still live, and the last time I checked, there were 200 signatures, and she asked me to read this to you to kind of point out that, you know, we do need some updates in Washington Park. Thank you. I've had some off the cuff conversations with redevelopment and they're willing to participate to some degree, but they're looking for you know the city to also um, take on probably the the majority of the, of the funding of that project. But uh, thank you for making us aware of the petition. Uh, any other comments from the public? President Latchford, I have just two comments. Sure. Um, we were notified by Lake Hill School that we could not use their facility this year um, for our City Kids Day Camp. That coupled with the fact that we only have two applications for day camp leaders and we need 14 to run our full capacity of 65 children. Um, at this time, we are canceling the day camp. Um, I'm sad to say that. It's, a, it's a, one of our best programs, I believe. Um, but unfortunately, our hands are tied. We have no staff, no facility. And then secondly, I would like to say, I don't want to hear one person in Michigan City say there's nothing to do in Michigan City after tonight's agenda. <laughs> it's going to be difficult to choose what to do on the weekends. So I'm just really excited that all of our events are coming back um, and quite a few new events are coming back. I'm super excited to work with Victor. He's an idea man, forward thinker, and he's just a great addition to Michigan City. So people get out there, enjoy it. Thank you. Thank Jim. you. In regard to the City Kids Day Camp too, it's, it's more of an issue of uh, staffing it than a facility. We could find a facility if we had the staff, but it's the staffing is the real problem. That is the real problem. Cause I do believe that we could work with the YMCA or there's other possibilities. Um, the problem with having it in the playgrounds, which a lot of people ask, why don't we just go back to having it in the playgrounds is they need the kids need shelter, sort of the leaders for inclement weather. They need a safe place um, for any situation that would arise. They need food service. There has to be restrooms. So the uh, playground camps that we used to do in the past just aren't feasible. But yeah, I mean, through some miracle, if we start getting applications in, we would, you know, do our best to find somewhere to host that camp. Okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, any board comments tonight? I have just one comment, uh, and I know it's getting uh, a little long, but uh, this was kind of a feel-good story, and it brought this to my attention when we were talking about metal detectors. And a few days ago, a friend of mine and his 10-year-old grandson were using a metal detector just off of the east-west pier on the beach, and they found a beautiful wedding ring. And uh, they gave it to me. They said, well, you're on the park board. Maybe you can find out who it was. So my wife looked at it and she put a, a request out on Facebook. And yesterday, a woman called and identified the ring and a beautiful, beautiful ring, not a scratch on it. And her husband was with his grandchildren last summer when he lost this ring. And that ring has gone through bulldozing down there and only the good Lord knows what else. And the grandson found that. And today uh, they came and they picked it up. They were very gracious about that. And my wife put on the on Facebook that the ring has been found and returned. And so far she has had over 300 comments saying that was really neat that this young man with a metal detector found the ring and made a couple very, very happy. Just kind of a feel good story to end the day. Thank you, Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Kent. 
That's that's a great story, Kent. I'm glad you shared it. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to little, be redundant here a little bit. Um, Laura, I read through all those uh, documents. I, I, a lot of it, uh, yes, is repetitious, but my hat's off to you to sit down and do that. Do that. Aww, that's so sweet. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm thrilled to be here, guys. You, you really do a great job. The board is always prepared. You always read your material. I can't tell you what what a blessing that is when you have a participatory board like this. It's it's not always the case. So kudos to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to recognize Shannon. She's on vacation, believe it or not, and uh, she <laughs> out more time than needed. To, uh, not only tonight, but when she's on vacation, she makes herself readily available. But especially to come in tonight and run, help run, and the meeting and get us through all this. So thank you, Shannon, for that. You're welcome. But tomorrow, don't bother me because I'll be out metal detecting with my grandson. <laughs> Well, enjoy the weather. We have that. Amen. Uh, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, our next board meeting is Wednesday, April 23rd. Uh, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion uh, 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 Good night, everyone. Night. Good night, night. Be well. good night everyone. And be Bye. safe. Bye. Bye.